The gait cycle is the framework for understanding movement patterns and there is well established phases within the gait cycle that break the movement patterns into specific sections. These subsections of gait are characterised by certain joint positions and movements as well as muscle activity. Any variation from these positions or movements may be associated with increased and potentially injurious forces acting through the lower limb. The role of the gait analysis in part is to evaluate human movement against these standard phases of gait and to identify any variation from these parameters. Using the video footage and viewing the left leg, a complete gait cycle begins when one foot makes contact with the floor and ends when that same foot makes contact with the ground again. The cycle is made up of two phases. Stance phase is initiated when one foot makes contact with the supporting surface and swing phase is initiated at terminal stance just after toe off on the same side. Stance phase is where the greatest focus sits during gait analysis as this is where the foot and leg bear load and the phase is in which the majority of the joint movements and muscle action is most prevalent. The stance phase can in turn be divided into three stages. This video sequence provides a practical illustration of these key areas of stance. Initial contact is when the foot makes contact with the supporting surface and accounts for the first 20% of the gait cycle. The knee will be in full extension just prior to this contact point, as when the limb starts to accept weight, the knee flexes in combination with the anteplantar flexing. This is known as the loading response. This loading response phase also incorporates a foot pronation in the frontal plane view and these composite movements lead to an internal rotation of the leg and allow the foot, ankle and leg to act together as shock absorbers. The foot pronation at this stage of gait allows the foot to adapt to differing terrains and contours. During mid stance, the foot and leg provide a stable platform for the body weight to pass over. Foot pronation should have stopped and if the foot is still pronating at this time, then there will be excessive movement and instability at this level, which can have a contributory factor for soft tissue and joint injury. This part of the gait cycle is also classed as single limb support, and this is when the other foot is in swing phase, therefore body weight is borne by the standing leg. Propulsion is the final stage of the stance phase and begins immediately as the heel lifts off the ground. The mechanical efficiency in this stage is influenced by a series of joint movements, in particular through the first metatarsal head pivoting against the hallux and soft tissue activity via the plantar fascia and windlass mechanism combined with other muscular actions to allow the foot to act as an efficient lever. The swing phase begins with toe off and ends just before the foot makes contact with the ground again and a new gait cycle starts. This phase is further subdivided into pre-swing, mid-swing and terminal swing phase and each subsection of the swing phase is associated with certain joint positions of the hip, knee and ankle. Gait analysis allows an in-depth view of these key stages in both stance and swing to understand how movement and function can contribute to lower limb pathology. Gaining confidence in analysing movement is a key component in biomechanical assessment and these movement findings coupled with a thorough hands-on assessment will allow a structured management plan to be developed in managing your patient's lower limb symptoms.